Bro, I want to kick this off by talking about last night at yep. the Break and Bread Battles press conference. The weigh-ins. Your yes. entry into that was like it stood out above everyone else's. A lot of other people were choosing their own music yep. and you know what I mean? And I thought that was cool. But when you came out with like the John Cena thing, right? Yeah. And you had your shirt off, <laughs> that was fucking hilarious. Bro. Thank you, man. Yeah. I really felt like I had to play it up. You know, when you get given these opportunities, especially because it was a comedy night as yeah. well, I... um. I was like, okay, how, how can I really lean into this? It is a funny concept, rappers getting together for a press conference and doing a Q&A like a bunch of boxes. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, let's, let's go crazy with it. Um, and it was no, fun. <laughs> no one else interpreted it that way, um, yeah. which was interesting, you know what I mean? And then I, I, I wouldn't have interpreted it that way either. I was like, oh, how, I was thinking like, how could you come out looking kind of as intimidating or as tough as you can? Yeah, like, yeah. I'm going to fucking win this. I guess it's that hip hop ego or whatever, you know? <laughs> For sure. And, and say if I was battling Arrows or Scrub, I might have done it that way. Right. Again, I am pretty comedic, so who knows? But versing Phoenix, I've had this... Uh, wanting to keep it funny to yeah. the audience the whole time. I don't ever want to be like... It make it feel weird how much I don't like Phoenix in the banter yeah. or whatever. Because <laughs> yeah, it just yeah, feels yeah. a bit yucky. Yeah. And that's why, like, when we... Or even for all the posters, we had to do, like, these boxing stances. And I just sent through photos of me doing, like, this. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was scared. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't even want to make it look like I was going to punch a woman. So, yeah. yeah. But it is. it was all just for a bit of fun. You know? but it's, it's good, man. It shows your unique character, I think. And it, and it stands out amongst uh, everyone else, you know what I mean, that's trying to – well, not necessarily trying to do something that, that they're not. But I think you're so yourself um, that that's what stands out about you. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think that's something I learned very quickly in the scene is like I do not want to pretend I'm some right. hard – gangster rapper i'm far from it like yeah. I've, I've lived h- hard situations and stuff yeah but um yeah it's just not me yeah, yeah so i um want to i think i've been always wanting to make it very clear like the the fun person i am so yeah yeah i lean into it yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> fucking oath bro so are you excited bro are you uh, nervous? How are you feeling about it? It's tomorrow night. That's right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm beyond pumped for it, man. So yeah. this is actually my first a cappella written battle. True. I've done a lot of battling on stage freestyle, not knowing my opponents and stuff. Yeah. But uh, to have so much time to prepare the bars and learn them is something new and knowing mm. my opponent. And when, you, when you're given that preparation time there's a lot more pressure on it i feel Mm. like well this has got to be good you've been given x amount of time to really bring your best stuff this isn't just a freestyle so so it's a different time type of pressure but in saying that i would like to think i'm quite prepared for tomorrow and um definitely bringing the a game yeah Yeah. it's gonna be fun i was gonna ask you about that with a freestyle battle like you can kind of brush it off as, oh, I fucked up, it's a freestyle. Yeah, like, yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. Do you, do you think this, this is going to be easy for you to take the win? I, I'm, not, I'm not holding any definite expectations because yeah. the very interesting thing I've found is this whole time is I'm not in my hometown. Right. Phoenix is in her hometown. Yeah. So I've spent the last week getting faced by other rappers going, Phoenix is going to demolish you, bro. Really? Like, she's going to come with it, bro. Like, yeah, a lot of, she's got a lot of support here. And shout out to all the people supporting your local artists. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's not intimidating, but it's definitely, you know, made my – Ego in check. It's keeping yeah, me in check. Yeah. I'm not going in there like, oh, she's getting smoked. I'm, yeah. I'm really hoping that it's going to be a good battle on both ends. Yeah. That's what's going to make it a good battle. I think it will be, man. One thing that was interesting about the press conference yesterday, and one thing I noticed was you were a lot more confident and calm up on stage. Thank you. But, and so I was kind of, exp- you know, I was kind of like expecting that she was maybe a bit nervous or wasn't going to say much. But she fucking came in with She came with a few shit. smokes there, yeah. And I was just... Yeah, I got put in my place once or twice, I'll admit that. Yeah. And um Yeah, but that's part of the fun. She's very quick with her comebacks as well. Yeah. Um and it's when you're in that sort of situation, it's a very it's a very different situation, just yelling banter back and forth at each other with an audience in front of you. Yeah. I haven't done a lot of that, so um but yeah, it, <laughs> she's done very well keeping me in check. Yeah. That's for sure. It's going to be cool, man. I'm excited for it. Um, h- how much of like rap battle is your passion as opposed to like making music? Yeah, huge. Um, I wouldn't say it's like outweighs it at all. I don't have a preference per se. Yeah. But I've been an avid fan of rap battle, and not just in the Australian scene since. <sighs> 
for a long time, man. I can't remember what the first battle I ever saw was, but um, I've been a big fan of like the UK scene mm. um, and dove into the American scene a bit. But a lot of the comedy and like the stuff that I really follow is been from the uk and yeah we share a lot of like similarities with our um kind of culture and view on the world i feel like with the uk you know yeah what I mean? right yeah yeah i do t- I, I try to take a lot of inspiration for the songwriting from a lot of uk artists as well but i'm also never trying to box myself in yeah so yeah, yeah but with the battle rap side of things it's just kind of fallen in the right place at the right time um the this event came up at the right time and and now I just want to go gun ho with it. Yeah. I think, yeah, like a uh, good example being Eric Devine, just watching the his trajectory right. of battling, get, yeah. coming in as a fresh face and just killing it and killing it, and making sure that momentum stays strong for him. Yeah, I'm seeing this as my beginning, and I really hope that I can continue the momentum of it. Yeah, now. yeah. What's interesting about a battle, although I suppose because they're not being judged, it's may maybe debatable, but. Most likely, you're only getting one person that continues that momentum. Exactly. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, unless it's a really close one. Mm. Yeah, so that's another pressure I'm feeling is like, if I don't bring the A game to this one, I might be off the ladder. Yeah, and you, yeah. You, it makes it twice as hard, if not more, yeah. to get yourself even on a card again. Yeah, yeah. You know? Especially, um, yeah, if it's like zero and one. That's yeah, your record. Yeah, hey, and I lost to a girl, resume. you know? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, oh, you can imagine what all the fucking battles against you are going to be in any future battle. Uh, exactly. So yeah. there there are some pressures there. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. <laughs> yeah. Not to get you extra nervous, man. I'm no. sure you'll be fine, yeah. but just don't fuck up, all Exactly. Right? No yeah. joking, man. I've been yeah. running lines like a madman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm excited, man. I think it's going to be cool. It's actually going to be my first battle ever seen in person, eh? Right. I've yep. never been... I've actually never been, like, heavy into the battle scene, um, but I'm really excited to, to get into this. Yesterday got me really pumped up. Yeah. And I think this is, like, kind of the start of a new era of For Australian sure. battle rap. Yeah. Um, it's... A, it, feels so different to mm. the last era um it's not toxic mm. it, it yes we go in and we battle and you can say whatever you want in the battles you know and be crazy but this whole event has just been all love yeah. everyone involved uh are extremely a part of the team yeah we've all have banter but it's all in jest and we're all friends you yeah. know chatting and like last night i, I got along with phoenix yeah. like they're, they're great people yeah um so it, it makes it a lot easier to do this stuff when previously it was pretty constant seeing these battlers become quite toxic mm. or the beef would become real yeah. quite a lot. Yeah. Um, and that's not always the artist's fault. Yeah. It goes on the audience. Like right. I, I could tell you the amount of times I've gotten messages in the last two months saying, are you actually beefing with Phoenix? Like, wow. do you actually hate her because she's a friend of mine or oh. we're on the other end? Like, yeah, fuck Phoenix. And I'm like, no, 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 this is, this wow. is it's just for the battle. Yeah. That's interesting, man. I never really thought about it like that. The fans are actually what's kind of driving that, yeah. that beat. Well, if you look back at the Curse of Earth 360 yeah. thing, that was all the audience and the yeah. fandom of the Eshe versus the um, Metro, or yeah. the Lad versus Metro back then. Um, and so it became so much more than the artists. Yeah. yeah because the audience controlled it. That's interesting, man. Uh, well, one thing about the Break and Bread battles, I don't think that's going to happen. No. Yeah. I, I think with these things like the weigh ins and the Q&As and yeah. the banter we're doing, the way that um, Break and Bread has run it. It's it's still bringing off this v- good vibe, you know. It's a it's more of a good time vibe for everyone. Yeah. And of course, this battle scene is gonna have it's gonna get dirty yeah. at points. That's what it's for. Yeah. But it's something so cool about being able to do this and walk away and shake hands yeah. and yeah. just like be like, oh, that was fun. That was really cool. Do you think it adds extra entertainment value to have real beef? Yes, a hundred percent. It does. Yeah. And I think. But that's when, like, this banter comes into play and Phoenix or I are roasting each other on our stories. Like I said, 50% of the people are taking it as real beef. Yeah, yeah. Yes, that's true. So So the entertainment value is there. The entertainment value is there. And I've gotten so many messages saying, the build-up to this has been so good, the banter between you and Phoenix. I can't wait to see the next story and stuff. So there is, I think there's a way to do it without it being real. It doesn't have to end yep. up in someone getting jumped or whatever, you know? That's true. Um, yeah. But 
it might take a little extra work to make it interesting. Yeah. And I think that's where I've had a bit of fun with it, trying different attacks and things. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, this is going to come out after the battle. That's all right. So um, I want to ask you a question that uh, Phoenix won't see, obviously, until after the battle. Uh, you, you, you've been making a few videos, making a few posts and stuff leading up towards the battle. Has that been a way for you to feel out what's going to trigger her? Or has it just been a bit of fun? It's. it's you do, by the way, you don't have to answer any, answer anything you don't want to answer. Gotcha. Um, but, yeah. No, that's a good question. I've been yeah, in a sense. Yeah. Because I haven't. Again, I've been not wanting to go low brow yeah. or be gross or anything like that. So I've I've tried to keep it to a certain degree of light heartedness in the banter and saving the real heavy hits for the battle itself. Yeah. Because that's where. It, is supposed to be. Yeah. I think that's when it gets real. Is when people mm. start going talking shit about each other on the stories, right? And it yeah. feels like, oh, this guy's actually meaning what he says here. Yeah. Um, sorry, I've gone on a tangent. That's all right. <laughs> what was the question? So yeah, do you like was uh, making those videos a yeah. way of, kind of feeling that out? Yeah. So I, the reactions of what she was giving me wasn't necessarily giving me ammo to write down, but it. It helped me know what lines I wanted to cross, yeah, I think, yeah. and where, where to take things and what to say for the battle. Or yeah. There were a few points where I go, okay, that could trigger her. And that, I think that annoys her. Yeah. But that stuff all came naturally as well. Yeah. It doesn't matter now, like you said, you're going to see this after the battle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. it was more what she would say in the group chat. Oh, yeah, interesting. Yeah, just casual conversations. And wow. we would be like, I sent Greeley... Oh, uh, how long are these rounds go for? Are we doing one and a half minute rounds, three minute rounds? And he goes, "Oh, yep, three rounds of one and a half minutes." And she just messages and goes, "Damn, that's a lot of writing." Oh, and I'm like, "Oh, is it yeah, now? Yeah. That's a four and a half minutes, you know?" Like, yeah. so it, it's just really casual things. I was really trying to tune into it. There was yeah. a point where I almost felt like hitting up Eric and a few people around and being like, "What do you know about things? Yeah, Give yeah, me the yeah, dirt." Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. it didn't get to it because yeah. I did my research. Yep. I did a little bit of online stalking. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I found what I needed to find. Yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. This has got me keen, bro. Yeah. I'm excited to see. Um, I was also going to ask you, uh, how, how do you think we can maintain this kind of culture around battle rap? Like, this is the way it's starting out yep. with this new kind of uh, rebirth of Australian battle rap. Yep. What do we need to do? to maintain the healthy mm, kind of... That know, is a really to. good question. And I think it definitely starts behind the scenes because, like we've said, the audience can think one thing, but as long as everyone behind the scenes that is working on this thing is yeah. thinking and feeling the same thing, then it should be fine. Okay, so yeah. the connection is everything. Yeah. If you're picking the right people for the event, it, it starts from square one. You've got to pick the right people, have the right team... And then that should just spread naturally. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the times people are going, uh, well, this is what would happen a lot, would be these two bigger artists, they might actually hate each other already, yeah. you know, but it's like, let's get these two crazy yeah. artists and put them together. Even think, just two people, sorry to cut you off, you're right. that you can like, oh, they're not going to get along. Exactly, or that yeah. might stir the pot, you yeah, know? Yeah. And I think that's not necessarily... We've chosen, well, Breaking Bread have chosen incredible artists that yeah. I think are really good choices, but I don't think the choice was let's make controversy. Let's no, pick people yeah. who hate each other and things like that. Yeah. Just let's pick two really talented artists who are going to make a good show. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think the organization is a huge part of it. And then just, yeah, keeping that vibe throughout, throughout the build up. Yeah. I think the, it is a fine line where to keep that banter and when the beef is on, I think there is also a way to, necessarily have real a beef and it not go too far out of hand as well yeah there's something yeah. cool about if two people two rappers have a real beef yeah. going okay let's take it to the battle yeah i get you that could be it's like a healthy way of resolving for the sure issue. and you can That's actually true. squash something yeah necessarily yeah um so yeah it's uh, it's an interesting question yeah but uh it's in the right hands that's all i can say is breaking bread productions uh the, it's the coolest thing I've seen recently yeah. in the culture of just bringing all elements of hip-hop together yeah. um, and just being super welcoming, but also caring so much about the talent. Yeah. 
Um, it's With a, a team, focus on the artist. Focus on yeah. the art and the artist. Uh, just good art. So it's, it's just, I think we're in the right hands right now. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I couldn't agree with that more, bro. I was actually, I was going to say something similar. You know, I think um, I'm really excited to see what the future of Break and Bread looks like. Mm-hmm. To anyone from anywhere else around the country, if you're not across Break and Bread or across the world, I mean, fuck it, definitely check them out. And if you ever come to Melbourne, Hit them up. They have networking events. Have you been to 100%. any of the networking events? No, I haven't yet. He just fucking free food for everyone at Fat Friday and Tasty, free alcohol, free drinks, whatever you want. It's just come in. You don't have to pay anything. It's completely free. Chat with everyone and well, then go home. Uh, I wish I'd been to one of those events. Yeah. Uh, I've been meaning to go to Fat while I'm here, so I might have to go there tomorrow Yeah, um, because they're one of our sponsors. Shout out to Fat Shout Fried to and that. Tasty. Um but yeah, I've got to go there because yeah. well, all the stories I've seen from the meetups and stuff, yeah, it looks like fun and it's the food, food looks incredible. So yeah. yeah, it's good food. It's a good atmosphere. It's in a good spot as well. Yeah, I, I like a greasy food. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm an American. You Ameri- don't look like a bro. <laughs> it's funny you say that. Yeah. yeah. No, I've lost somewhere between 20 and 30 kilos in the last few years. True. Yeah. Someone yeah. mentioned that last night. Yeah. I thought they were joking. Yeah. You've actually lost a lot of weight. Yeah, I've lost a lot of weight. What, but what? In a span of time, so I, I right. don't think it looks like a crazy drop, but yeah. um, I definitely used to be a fairly chunky kid. Yeah, okay. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I was working so much. I was right. doing double shifts, overnight shifts, and then working through the day and just eating so poorly, yeah. not eating enough. And uh, because I was working overnight, I, my stomach didn't know when it wanted to eat. I never right. had an appetite. So moving and being more fit than I was for a while. I became really fit and ate less. So yeah. it wasn't a healthy choice, really. It's not a good way to lose weight. <laughs> yeah, but that's yeah, what yeah, happens, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're happy with you are now? You're, you're healthier, you're I fit? I sh- should be healthier. Yeah. <laughs> Don't vape, kids. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Quit the vapes. Um, and, yeah, apart from that, I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with where I am. Yeah. yeah. That's good, man. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, I'm skinny uh, after <laughs> showing my bare, empty, white chest yeah, to a yeah. crowd last <laughs> yeah. night. Um, yeah. I definitely need to keep my reps up a little bit more, but yeah. yeah. Oh, bro. I mean, need to is a um, need to is very subjective there. It comes down to what you want to do. If you want to do that to feel happy with yourself, then yeah, you need yeah, to do it. But that's true. if you're happy with yourself, you don't have to, you know. Facts. That's the thing is like being healthy. I mean, look, strength training is apparently really really good for your bones your joints and all that kind of stuff for longevity as well so it's not just physique it's definitely um good for you health wise Mm -hmm. um but again man it's like we're all gonna die of cancer these days yeah you know what i mean exactly (laughs) everything in moderation i do live by that a little bit um but yeah yeah, so uh, you have a big passion for battle rap. You're yes. going pretty hard into that at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, what does the rest of your career look like at the moment and where do you want to take that? It's a great question. I don't really have like the five-year plan like a lot of people like to and I have to be here at this point. I definitely did a year or two ago. Um, like, oh, I want to do this and that and the other thing. But each uh, step has taken me somewhere in a direction i really couldn't have imagined but i'm so grateful for it to end up where i am now i just could have never predicted it so my thing right now is just be willing and be open Mm. to what is ever coming at me and if i'm getting offered something that is worth it or i feel like it's going to take me to that next thing just never saying no Mm. because um i've had some daunting scary things come offered to me that i would have never said yes to a while ago, but right. jumping at these opportunities and just running with it, it's taken me really far. And so, sorry. No, you're fine. So what has changed for you to be able to say yes to those opportunities? Um, I think it got to a point, I was going through like my first year of like trying to put on local shows and opening for local artists and things and, Trying to just find my place and then once I really started to get my head in the local scene and start to get offered bits and pieces, it, it I quickly learnt if you, you have to jump at these opportunities. Right. There's other artists who are saying no to this one thing and then boom, they don't get offered that next four, five, six things. Right. Um, it's very easy to be known as the person who won't show up yeah. or will say no to something. And the scene's too small, the word will spread. Um, so it's yeah, being a, a good 
on time, you know, uh, reliable artist yep. as well. Because that's a whole other thing that will make people want to work with you again. Just doing that will make you stand out amongst like 90% of rappers in the country. Yeah. Like facts. actually just showing up to what you say you're going to show up to. Yeah. Like. And showing up to things that aren't just to do with you. Right. It's huge. The yep. amount of networking I did at hip hop gigs that I had nothing to do with mm. and just meeting artists and being a fan, mm. like actually going up, singing their music. Cause I, I am such a fan of the local mm. hip hop scene. I listen to more Brisbane rap than I do us rap that's See? on the charts and stuff, you know, yeah. it, it, which makes it hard. But, um, yeah, I just, that's definitely made so many connections, real connections. Yeah. You know, um, I, I agree. I think that's incredibly important to show your face, to show support, and mm-hmm. more importantly than anything, for that support to actually be real and genuine. Yeah. How, like, what advice would you give to someone that's struggling to be genuine? Like, you, I'm mm. sure you've met a lot of these people. I've met a lot of them too. Yep, I don't know sure. what the fuck to tell them. They're just kissing ass. Mm. Yeah. They're, they're doing it because they think that's the way. Yeah. And it's all they've ever known, right? Exactly. And so I try not to be angry with them mm-hmm. but what would you say to someone that's struggling to figure out the way yeah the the fakeness will get you caught out and that will make you look worse than it ever did if you naturally went up to that artist and said hey i've not actually heard of you but that was a really cool performance dude yeah, yeah there's always something you can compliment someone on 100 percent. and I, I i study live performances like crazy i'll stand there and go what can i take out of that to put into my show and so usually i'm already thinking about it and so if i get to catch up with them i'm like i love the way you brought that out on show or the way you wrapped the way you held your mic or the way you were hyping each other there's the, you know and um yeah i it is a hard one getting your foot in and actually just starting to make those connections but mm. i think you're not going to get loved by everyone and you're not going to love everyone. So if this particular artist isn't for you, just keep searching Mm. and keep hunting because there's a lot of artists out there and there's a lot of shows. Eventually you're going to click with something Mm. and then make those real connections. That's the most freeing mindset, right? When you realize or when you, you finally just come to terms with the fact that not everyone's going to like you. Mm -hmm. You're not going to like everyone. And that's fucking okay. You know what I mean? For real. And I've struggled with that a lot. Uh, I love to be a networker and chatty and friendly. Um, So there's definitely been times where someone isn't feeling, picking up what I'm putting down, which is totally understandable. I make some out there stuff. (laughs) And I have to kind of be like, oh, okay. You know? And it's a weird feeling, but I'd like to think I'm slowly getting better with that. Yeah, sick. Yeah. Uh, one other thing I wanted to ask you about, you're a self-proclaimed nice guy, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. I am. So do you find that there's additional challenges that come with that, being like a nice person in the hip-hop scene? Do yep. people see it as weakness? Do people try and take advantage of you? Yeah, uh, I'm coming into a stage at the moment where I've learnt, because I've done so much co- connecting and networking, um, and really tried to be a nice guy through it, um, that sometimes people are going to use that Mm. uh, take advantage of that uh, and run with it because there's been a lot of times I've been stuck helping other artists and realised that they've never given it back or cared about that. Simple examples of, like, people always messaging you to like their reel and check their song yeah. out and stuff <laughs> but I you just say fuck anyone yeah. that does that and I'm you, sorry if you no do that. please fuck no fuck them and like if you don't know them yeah. it's so different if it's my mate sending it to me and we go back and 100%. forth yeah yeah but there's a lot of that going around and yeah it can be pretty frustrating i had someone do that uh i've had someone that's been doing that kind of for the last month they've been sending oh, really? me and never spoken to them before yep right uh no no relationship with them at all whatsoever don't know who they are they don't know me i assume mm-hmm. they've probably just seen whatever and then yeah they start sending it and after about a month They've commented on one of my things saying where I'm saying like, hey, if, you know, I'm here to help artists. Rah, yep. rah. He commented on that saying, I don't believe you're here to help artists. <sighs> right. Because he's been sending me his stuff for a month yeah. and I haven't bent over backwards yeah. and kissed his ass and it, praised him like the Lord, you know. It's very interesting that. But you, these artists that have that mentality, they have to change that mentality and sometimes it's only up to you to do that i think and whether they're going to find it quickly or later on when someone really tells them you know what i mean um 
that's just their own journey to figure out because you're not going to get far with no. that mentality. It's the quickest way to piss someone off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, it goes back to, like we were saying, being disingenuous. Yep. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's just not a good move. That's, that's exactly what it is, isn't it, man? It's disingenuous because you're kind of like... You, you know that that person is spam sending it. Yeah. You know that that's For not sure. a personal message. Yeah. So already you're like, they don't even respect me enough to actually just say, hey, bro, mm-hmm. do you mind checking this out and telling me what you think? And that's why I, I was the self-proclaimed nice guy because I spent a long time in that network era, which I still am in, but I was feeding into it and going, yeah. oh, okay, I'll check it out. Sure, I'll comment and then I'll go follow this guy and now I'm supporting them and whether I like their music or not it, it didn't necessarily matter because eventually I realised how many artists I was doing that for that mm. just were not reciprocating it yeah. and um, so I, I've been putting my foot down a lot lately it's good. and I, I've found it doesn't make you an asshole or anything like that, you're being truthful and you're, you're yeah, being a people pleaser can be just as damaging as being an absolute wanker. Yeah, know? oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, one hundred percent. And this is something because I I used to be a, a people pleaser, right? Yep. I very much used to be like that, and similar experience to you. So not in hip hop, but just in life in general. Yeah, I was like, hang on, I'm fucking running around doing all this shit, mm-hmm. and when does anyone ever do that in return? And so now, you know, I like to help people, but no one's fucking taking advantage. Yeah, and that's just how it is. Yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, I feel like I'm on that journey in life as well, uh, and um, it's definitely been a good. A good time, I feel, to put my foot down. So, yeah. yeah that's good, bro. Yeah. You'll have to do it, you know, because as your um, audience increases, as your presence increases and people start to see that maybe you can provide them with things, yeah. they're g- there's going to be fucking leeches galore. Oh, you know 100%. What I mean? And I'm, don't get me wrong, I'm about the community. Once I go here, I'm going back to the sunny coast where I live yeah. and we're going to start the battles there, ground up, Sick. just out on the streets because I've had youngins message me i love my freestyle and how do i get on a card like you and to be honest it's not easy <laughs> there's yeah. not battles everywhere every week every month yeah. so the, i want to start that culture there from the ground Sick. up so there are things happening there you know so it's not me not wanting to be about it or help out but yeah just seeing through that it, exactly it's just about going about it the right way i yeah. should say the same thing it's not that i don't want to help people it's not that i don't want to 100%. check out your music it's just and i made a video on this the other day um just Fucking treat people with respect. Yeah. You know it doesn't I mean? take much to, uh, oh, okay, so this is what your platform does and this is what I could potentially get out of yours by collaborating. So I'm going to check out your platform. I'm going to go through it. I'm going to yeah. find some stuff I like about it. Yeah. Then I'm going to message you and compliment what I like about you. Yeah. I'm going to have a conversation about you yeah. and then maybe the next conversation you have, right. you can bring it up. You exactly. know, there's, it's, it's not hard to be genuine. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent, bro. A hundred percent. That's another thing is, yeah. If you're just going to find something to compliment someone about, and then in the same message or even like straight after it, just be like, Oh man, I really, really like how you do this. I support it. Rah, rah, rah. Uh, can you check out my stuff? It's like, well, okay. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. For sure. <laughs> yeah. It, it happens a lot. So, one thing about you that I think stands out as well and I think is um, a really good uh, trait about yourself, to be honest, is you pursue music, you pursue the craft, but you also provide and um, give back to the culture in other ways. So mm. do you want to talk about some of the other ways that you do uh, that, like with the battle thing you've got yeah, coming up? Yeah, so we I, – I have a group of artists around me that I'd like to consider, like my good friends and stuff, and they're all the same mentality right now. It's about building it from the ground up. Like if I didn't have – uh, my good mate Potsy, shout out to Potsy, Sunshine Coast legend. If I didn't have him put me on my first ever set, then I don't know how I would have got mm. here, you know. So it's always giving back. And um, so ways we have done that is um, I've helped Potsy out, but he, like, runs our Sunshine Coast monthly open mic, hip-hop open mic. Oh, see. Because it's, it's still a very small hip-hop scene. So to have a monthly out, uh, outlet where anyone can come up and run three songs every yeah. month, you know? Yeah. Um, so we've been doing that. Um, I've done fundraisers multiple times for people in the community, in the hip hop community. Um, and now the battle thing is what I really want to bring up. Cause I just think it's such a good time mm. while breaking bread are really trying to build it up 
uh, on the grand scheme, I want to try show that the Sunshine Coast and Brisbane as well, the Queensland sector, are going to be ready. We're going to have all these Fuck battlers yeah. here that are just killing it, ready yeah. for when you want them in the big yeah, smoke. Yeah, you know? that's actually really good thinking, bro. Mm. Getting some opportunities there so people can start refining that and yep. fucking testing the waters before the... Yeah, yeah and that's then a really it good gives idea. people like Breaking Bread this opportunity to search out the playing field and mm. see what the next up-and-comers are, yeah. you know, because there are uh, only so many platforms that are showing it. Yeah. Um, I think as well, and this goes for literally anything, the more we have of something going on, the better it is for everyone that's involved. Yeah. You know, people see um, – people – sorry, people could interpret that as you trying to compete with break and bread. Right. But – or or you know what I mean? But – Competition is always good. Yes, it's exactly. always healthy. Mm-hmm. If you if Breaking Bread is the only place doing battles, mm-hmm. where's the drive to always be on your A game? Exactly. You know? And um, I also want to make sure I do all of this the right way as well. There is a lot of fine lines I'm learning about battle rap and uh, turfs and things right, like that. Right. Like it's a very interesting thing. I'm studying like the got beef history and all that sort of thing. Um, with the, there was a few different companies doing it at the time, and it was like if you were in Queensland, you were with this and right. like, so Real Talk. Uh, sorry, Real Talk was another huge one, and so I remember these companies clashing, yeah. and things like that. So it's definitely not what I'm about. I, I've been talking to T from Breaking Bread yeah. about this as a, and, and Greeley as well. Like these are the things I want to take back and do, Fuck and yeah. like making sure I kind of get a blessing of sorts, yep. you know, or making sure I ask the right people the right way to go about it. Yeah. Because I'm definitely not trying to step on toes. We just want to rise everything up. Yeah. You know? yeah. And, that, and, and you know, like I should say as well, um, I'm, you know, T, T wouldn't see it as a bad thing at all. Like no. from what I know of T, he would be 100% on board with it for the same reason that we just spoke about. Yeah. The more of this we have in the culture, the better. And this is the other thing is like someone said to me a while ago, and I can't remember who it was, but our competition is not the the next guy or the person next to you. Our competition is other fucking hobbies. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, Our sure. competition is Netflix and shit. We yeah. want people to be fans of battle rap. Yeah, Who gives sure. a fuck if they're fans of Breaking Bread battle rap or Harlem battle yeah. rap? Or, you know what I mean? Because exactly. if you're a fan of battle rap, you're going to like it all. 100%. Yeah. You know. That is too true. Um, and that's what we're trying to do is that it feels like it's been from the ground up again. These guys have been building it. So we're really trying to... Now shine a light on this scene. It seems yeah. like uh, people are killing it in sub genres of Australian hip hop music all mm. over. You're starting to see people branch out and become popular in their own way. Mm. But it is such a hard struggle to get the outside audience to go, yeah. "Come check this out. This is awesome." Yeah, um, yeah. Something why, about. Why it. do you think that is, bro? I think the no music thing is a tough thing for someone who's not a rap fan necessarily. That can be a little bit daunting, maybe. Um, going because into, of the perception around Yeah, because I, I, this is what I get from a lot of people, and this is just my opinion. I get a lot of people come up to me and assume all rap battles. If I mention rap battle and they don't know what the scene is like, they would assume it's 8 Mile. Right. It's two people right, jumping right, up right. and rapping over a beat because yeah. the only idea of what battle rap is for a lot of people is 8 Mile. Yeah. That's all they know. True. Yeah, so yeah. they assume it must be like that. So when you explain to them what... It is, and you give them the classic Curse of Us 360 example, and then I think that can be daunting for people. But I, I think there's so much potential in the comedy aspects, you know? Yeah. People want to have a laugh. It's mm. not... You don't have to like hip-hop at all no. to come in here and have an amazing time. I, like you said, this is going to be your first live event. Mm. There's something so incredible about going into a live battle rap and feeling that tension in the room. Mm. 300 people in silence. And yeah. the only people that are allowed to talk are these rappers. You know, there's no beat to hide behind. Yeah. And there's, there's something... If you choke, you fucking choke. Exactly, yeah. man. So... There's, I think there's something there for everyone in these scenes, in these battles, especially the ones going on right now. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just cracking that algorithm, getting it out there to the people. Yeah. And, um, That's hectic, man. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm me excited. too. It's a, it's a crazy time. Yeah. Um, so do, do you want a break? Do you want to grab some water? You're welcome oh, to if you want. I think I'm all good. Yeah? Yeah. Um, uh, fuck, what was I going to say? Um, Sorry to cut you off. No, 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 not at all, not at all. Uh, what were we talking about? 
We're talking about the battle scene. So that's stoner brain. Coming. Yeah, no, nah, I feel you, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're talking about battles. We're talking about getting people into it. We're talking mm-hmm. about... Fuck, I had the question I really wanted to ask. Damn, damn. What was um, <sighs> <'Cause>, okay, <laughs> we're just talking about getting people involved into battle rap. Yeah, I've never yeah. been in battle rap. There was something about that. Damn. That's right. I, I, That's I, I hope it comes back. I think it's something else. Um, so, oh, yeah, yeah, right. So you're doing interviews as well, right? Yes. Yeah. So this is something pretty fresh for me. I've done interviewing in other aspects when I was at university. I've done a lot of acting and things like that as well. Yeah. So as I've been diving into the community so much and going to as many shows, I've realized in Queensland there is no no one like you doing yeah, what you're doing right. on the ground telling people what's going on and just trying to get it out there, you know, or having interviews and getting to know these up-and-coming artists. There's just not enough of it. Mm. We've got our local independent hip-hop station, radio station. Yep. We've got a couple of other outlets, and we've got, like, Beers, Beats, and the Biz. Shout oh, yeah, out to those yeah. guys. Shout out you Jake. can't ever forget about Jake Beers, baby. Yeah. Um, but it just, it just more doesn't hurt, you know. Yeah. It's only going to benefit for all of us. So my goal for what I'm doing with the full mix is our name – is we want to be in it in, in as much Queensland shows as possible yeah, and yeah. really getting to show, um, interview people who might ne- never get that chance or, you know, um, yeah. just show people what they might not get the chance to see unless they're actually at the yeah. gig because that might be the thing that, you know. 100%. Yeah. Uh, bro, that's like I'm very much trying to do the same thing as well. I'm trying to show people just how much fun these gigs actually are. Yeah. And that exactly like you said, you don't have to be a hip hop fan to enjoy yourself. Yep. But if you start coming, you'll probably realize hip hop is not what you thought it was. Yeah. And you'll probably become a hip hop fan. Exactly. And know? I think the interview side of it is that the audience can actually get to know or fall in love with, become a fan of. These artists for them right. and not the music. Yep. At this point in time, us artists are trying to just push songs out and listen to my music and that's what a lot of our promo is. It's yep. just go play this song where you have to actually really get your audience to like you mm-hmm. and not just your music. 100%. So this is a great opportunity to you know, get these people out there. What do you stand for? Mm. What are you trying to get out with this music? So That's what people are going to connect with. Exactly. So hopefully by doing this, we're helping these artists just kind of maybe get that next step or open people up a little bit about yep. what they wrote that song about. Or I really like the idea of Nabwar and Sean Evans from Hot Ones who are killing it as yeah. well and diving deep and asking some really good questions. Yeah, yeah. And so I like the idea of really researching and yeah. spinning someone out. Fuck or, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've done that a couple of times. Yeah, nice. And where you really get props for the questioning and that's a powerful thing as well. Yeah, so, yeah. for sure. And it drives you to uh, keep getting better at it as well. Yeah, I for think, sure. Yeah, it's yeah, a very really entertaining like... thing to watch as well when you dig through and find a piece of information from 15 years ago yeah. or someone's beginning of their career or whatever. Yeah. I just interviewed... Um, uh, as someone who's been in the Queensland scene for a long time and I mentioned the first group he rapped in or something like that and he didn't know where I found it. He could True. Because he didn't think he had put it online ever. Right. It was on Facebook somewhere. Yeah, someone had yeah, mentioned yeah, it. Yeah. It was simple, very so simple. It was just t- like way, way back. It was like this one little Yeah, it was his first rap group and I think his mate on his birthday posted about it or yeah, something, you true. know, and it's just cool. finding these little bits and pieces. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah like you might keep... have inspired me, I think, bro. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's a, yeah. It keeps it very interesting, yeah. Um, I want to ask you... What is the biggest challenge that you've faced within yourself when it comes to becoming the person you are today? Oh, wow. That's a, that's a good and deep question. Mm. Um, I wear a lot of different hats. I still like to do acting. Um, so in my spare time when I get offered kids' performances, I'm going and doing Paw Patrol shows. Oh, true. You know? <laughs> yeah. um, I do very different things. I work as a postie for my full time really? work. You yeah. work as a postie? Yeah, delivering mail. Man, you do not. My dad's a postman. Right, okay. Uh, you do not strike me as a postie at all. It came out of nowhere. I've yeah. been doing it for about a year, nearly a year now. Um, and it came through hip hop. Really? I, it, the, I was at the Dundee vs. Greeley battles in Hobart. Yeah. And Egg, who was hosting that battle, shout out to Egg, baby. He. Um, Offer me a job as a postie. True. Yeah, he actually owns routes. Oh, um, well. That's yeah, on the Sunshine Coast. And he so, just so happened to live on the Sunshine Coast where I was. That's wild. And we were both in Tassie 
we had met at another Dundee gig in Brisbane previously and yeah. he tried to give me a job then. I thought he was taking the piss. And <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, like, nah, yeah. seriously, I need a rider. And I'd never ridden a bike before. And he's like, right. I'll buy your license. We'll get you sorted. And it's been the best experience ever. Sick. He's been the best boss. And I would like to think I'm doing a good job for him as well. Are you on the old school bikes or are you in those old new ones? Bikes. You know how they got the fucking... Yeah, I loose. wish I had that, man. I just came from five days straight of downpour, oh, no, no protection. I'm on like Mountain View, so it's beautiful. But yeah. when it's pouring, it's like, all right, paper mache is going in every yeah. box today. Yeah, Fuck. It's man. a rough one. Have you come off the bike? When I was in training, because I was learning to ride a motorbike, yeah. we had a couple of... Like little, I had no major fall or anything, Good, but yeah. there were a couple of moments, you know, where I dropped the bike or something yep. like that. Yeah, um, yeah, but nothing, nothing crazy. Yeah, yeah. No, it's cool, man. The confidence yeah. had to come pretty quick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's wild. Um, no, that's cool, man. And uh, yeah, my, like I was saying, my dad's a postie. Yeah. Um, that is not the kind of job I was expecting you to do. Yeah. What's, what's the work environment like there? Because the stories that dad's told me, like, there's just people doing meth at work, people drinking at work. <laughs> I mean, I... I don't want to speak. Uh, sorry, your boss, like, that's, <laughs> no, of course, not where you work. That's not it's what happens at my work. No. Not at all. <laughs> We're angels as God. Yeah. Um, no, I think times have changed a little bit in our sector anyway, where yeah. I work in. I've heard some stories from the older people who have uh, been there for decades, yeah. but I've also been warned that times have changed, you yeah. know, and okay. you can't really get away with much anymore. Yeah. Um, I am a, I'm a stellar star worker for anyone watching this one. <laughs> yeah. I've not done anything, but I play by the rule book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Same, man. Always, yeah. always, except at the greenhouse. <laughs> yeah. Man, I suppose I could talk about this now. I don't think I can get in trouble for this. I don't know. But... When I was younger, you know, you maybe you don't make the best decisions and that. And uh, it was fucking great though, right? Because um, maybe I won't say everything because it's probably illegal. But my mate uh, and I, he was in the kitchens. Yeah. I was in the bar. Yeah. And this particular place that I worked at had the bar right next to the kitchen. Right. And there was cameras that looked in there. Okay. But as soon as you close the bar and pull down the shutters, the cameras can't see shit. Oh, okay. So when you're closing down the bar at the end of the day, who knows how much you spill uh, down the sink, yeah, right? Yeah. And who knows how many pizzas actually accidentally get cooked in the yeah, oven right um ah, good times yeah see, yeah that's some good times i didn't i did a little bartending and stuff i never had uh, an awesome opportunity like that um even when i worked uh, at takeaways i worked at chinese takeaways and i had such a tight ass boss he wouldn't True. make me a meal when i finished work yeah that's the worst man. Yeah, if you're working in a restaurant you should be allowed to get a free you meal. should be getting that meal yeah yeah otherwise go to a different restaurant i reckon yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. there's enough of them out there um but back to yourself i don't think we we got distracted yeah distracted. sorry sorry yeah, yeah. The, going back to the other question yeah I wear so many hats at the moment, and even outside of work, I look after my family a lot. I'm very involved and close with my family. I've got a partner right now that I love and care for a lot, you know, so I feel... Um what was the question? Sorry. What? So, what was the what's the biggest challenge uh, yeah. within yourself? That's right. So, the, the hardest thing is not dropping the ball on any of those things. Oh, right. Yeah, because no, they I to that. all are so important to me, and yeah. sometimes I go dive into this rap thing and just go crazy with it, and you definitely start to see everything else fall. Behind. Yeah. And so, balance and yeah. juggling everything um, is the hardest thing. How do you do that, bro? Because I very much relate to that, and I struggle. I can never. I can never be doing everything I want to be doing to the level I want to be doing. Yeah, that. I feel that, um, and I'm the same because I want to be doing a million things, and I think it's finding acceptance in what you actually can do. Right. Not giving yourself those million things. Okay, yeah. It's really awesome. I've got like a whiteboard at home that has all the things that I need need to be getting done. And it's a big list, don't get me wrong. And I have my diary where it's written down as well per day. And I try to give myself a full day of stuff. But I make sure it's realistic. Mm. And especially over the last year, giving myself those down times and going, okay, let's be realistic. We can't get X and X done, but we're going to get this and this and this mm, done. And yep. then going hard with yep. those things, executing my 100%. Yep. Once you start multitasking and doing 50 things in the day, you'll look back and realize nothing got done correctly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bro, that's literally my life. Like since doing Discover Hip Hop, I'm like, oh, these ideas, like I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this. Fucking chill out, man, because exactly. you end up, I commit to all this shit and – 
end up doing everything at 50% mm-hmm. rather than just doing a few things properly. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, I feel that the exact same way, especially about the full mix that I had started with my co-worker Todd. So it's owned by me and another guy called Todd. Oh, yeah, um, see. And we both just came to a realisation, we want to go gun ho with this. Yeah. But this is not right. Right now, we're holding so many baskets. Yep. We want to be giving this 100%. So we took a break and we made sure we built yeah, up the good. content and we yeah. did it right and we did it in our time. So when the timing is right, it's still going to be 100%, yeah. you know? So I think it is taking a step back and as tough as it is sometimes going, I am I might not be able to get yep. these 10 things done, but I might be able to get these five Yeah, and do it really well. And that's that's what's important, I think, yeah. especially if you want to you want to stand out and stay ahead of your competition. Mm-hmm. Um, is there anything you want to put out to the world, upcoming shows, music, Ooh. a message, anything at all, bro? I'll give you a little exclusive if you want. Fuck yeah. Um, I haven't told anyone this. I've been dropping singles for the last two year, two years. Sorry, 2024 is the year of the album release. Yeah, I dropped my the first year of the ever album. full project. Fuck yeah. Yeah, it's going to have some huge features on it that I've already got and I'm sitting on. Yeah. Some well-known names. I've definitely been keeping it all. While I'm building and making sure this is definitely the year for it. Yeah, but um, yeah, yeah. I think I've pretty much locked everything in. We're just trying to get a couple more tracks down and some, then some videos and things. Yeah, fuck it's yeah. It's probably going to be the later end of the year, but that's, yeah. that's a huge thing for me. Um, we're announcing a huge show, me and a good artist friend of mine. I'm not going to reveal it. Just yet. As but tempting as, as it yeah, may be. Yeah, yeah, so this is coming out after the battle, so it's going to be very close to the announcement of my next big show. Yes. Yeah, um, which is going to be outside of Queensland as well. So, yeah, yeah going into state, I want to keep the battles up this year, so yeah. hopefully you'll see me on a couple more cards this year. But they're the main ones. Yeah. I'm still going gun ho yeah. That's sick, man. <laughs> yeah. Fucking oath. I'm yeah. keen for that, bro. Yeah, yeah. And you. I think this year's the year for it, man. Yeah, it's got to be, man. Sometimes when the ball's rolling, you really can't stop it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. No. Yeah. And people, uh, we, we maybe we'll talk about that after because um, it's, it's about to run out. But uh, remind me, I want to talk about that. Like once you, you can't stop the ball from rolling. Mm-hmm. Um, but thanks so much for coming on, bro. Uh, thank uh, you for having me. It's no worries at all. Um, welcome anytime, honestly. Thank I you. had a great time chatting with you. Yeah, um, I agree. The dynamic's good. Yeah. Literally, whenever you're coming to Melbourne, hit me yeah. up. We'll do another thank one. Thank you, man. Yeah. I love the chat. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Harlem Bars on Instagram, right? Harlem underscore Bars on Instagram, TikTok, and all the other stuff. Just Harlem on the streaming Fuck yeah. platforms. Thanks so much for coming on, bro. Thank you. Much love. Peace. Peace. Yeah. That was sick. Thanks, man. That was awesome. No worries. Easy to have a conversation with you, bro. Yeah, like yo, 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 what yo. I said. Welcome to time. It's Harlem. Shout out to Discover Hip Hop. Shout out to Carney on the beat. Mm, mm. It's been too long since I've been flipping through pages Giving it ages I've been busy ripping the stages Dealing with schizophrenic shit from some ridiculous neighbours And getting bitches off my dick I'm sick of giving them favours I'm living only a bit above the minimum wages So I've been feeling every pinch Like I'm getting a face Of course I want to get a lady To shimmy and shake it Like I can't afford a break You ain't getting a raisin Sultana I've been giving all my cabana Going hard and now it's starting to look like a smush lasagna I don't want to paint a picture But maybe a diorama You can rub it for good luck like a Buddha I'm Dalai Lama Calling hoes to comatose when I come with flows Call me the captain, I'm always ready for motorboats Getting my coke in, I ain't talking some home alone No comprehend, hey, hey, you're not supposed to know I'm feeling greedy, I deserve to be in Fiji With Edie Beaties feeding me paninis and slim bikinis Playing eeny meeny, picking between them or maybe three I'm needing teasing or you immediately getting my seating Ah, proceeding to be a dick, I'm still running amok But I continue to give the same fucks as a nun, nun Ha, I'll never be done And if you're coming close, you're going to a cemetery, son Ha that was fucking unreal. Cheers, bro. That was mental. That's my favorite one of these so far.